So today um, we have a bit of an unusual one. So I have made certain decisions about that, but this is just because the assumption with this workshop is that you haven't ever done anything like this building a website before. So we're going to do the simple thing that allows us to learn the skills and how the website building program works. So there are lots of lots of website building programs. We are using WordPress. It is extremely widely used. It's pretty ergonomic. There's a lot of help online. If you get stuck, you could just stick WordPress and then you'll probably into Google and you'll probably find the answer quite straightforwardly in the future. And it's also um, fairly straightforward. It gives you a lot of flexibility. The one thing you need to know about WordPress is that it started not as a personal website builder, but as a blogging site. So, and there are some features of that um, that are left behind in, in the way it's, it's structured. So um, it's structured that there are a lot of kind of post ideas in it about how you're going to write posts and blog. And those are just legacy issues. They don't actually affect what we're doing today, but it does mean that if you do decide you want to start a blog, you can do so through your own personal website. You don't have to have a separate site. The other thing uh, you need to understand about blogging, if you decide to do it, it is quite a commitment. Um, even if you were to only do it once a month or once every two months, actually coming up with something and writing something useful about something every couple of months is a surprisingly substantial commitment I've found. Um, so um, I would, if you're sort of thinking in that way, I'd, I'd really seriously think about whether that's actually something you want to do. If you have a lot of sort of ideas or things you want to essay out in a semi-public forum, it can be useful, um, but it's a very personal thing. So to return to building our website, so I'm hoping that everybody has been able to download the Google Drive link. So before we go into, into the construction phase of this, what I'm going to do is take you for a very quick tour of my website. So you'll have an idea of the kinds of things you can build with WordPress. Now, my website is built with WordPress. It began over 10 years ago, my website. So it has gone through some iterations since then. But some of the pages you're about to see are um, the kind of thing you're going to be constructing today. So we're going to have a quick tour just so you can see how it works. And I'll also take you behind the scenes and show you the WordPress admin page um, that I have for me. Um, so you'll you'll understand a little bit more when you start to see the screenshots in the PDF and also on your screen in front of you. So I'm going to share my screen now. That's it. Okay, so can you see that? So it says describe in the house of life, have a pet and PhD, and I've got this sort of funky tagline below. So one of the things you need to understand about WordPress is that it comes with templates. So I'm using a specific template, it's called Lovecraft, um, and it basically means that every page that I have is going to have this sort of um, featured image at the top. Now those images change depending on which page you're on, as I have selected different images to change. Um, but the basic layout of the page remains the same. So you have, have title, tagline, these are menus, so I can click through to, let's go to publications, I'm quite proud of my publications page. So you can see I've got a different banner here, top page, and if we go down, I've got, I'm just going to move the banner with all of you people in it, you people in it. And we've got my orchid ID, quick bit of blurb about where you can find more information. And then we're straight into the details. So every single one of my pages has this sort of format of title, menus. Um, ooh, that's, ooh, what is that doing there? Um, I've just noticed something quite strange about my website. That's sorry about that. Um, and then you get this uh, picture and the title of the page, and then you go through it. So if we go, uh, let's have a look at the CV page. Um, yeah, so here you go. We've got my CV again, a different picture at the top because it's all about my professional work, uh, curriculum vitae, and then you've got a bit of blurb and then the actual document itself, which is embedded into the file. So a couple of other things. Depending on which uh, template you use, um, 
you end up with a choice of things of things like side headings. Now, these aren't very popular anymore. When I started, they were really popular, but they're not very popular anymore because they don't show up on tablets or mobile phones. And of course, a lot of people look at websites on tablets and mobile phones now. I still keep a few things in the sidebar in case people are looking them, looking this up on a computer. I keep the language one because it's quite possible that people will be looking at this in a different language and want it translated. Of course, there's a subscriber button, but I also have this information at the bottom of the pages. So you can see, not at that one, but you can see I've also got a contact page. And if we go to my home page, it's going to be very much like what you're creating. At the bottom, we've got a subscriber box. And you've also got the social media buttons you can follow me in different places so um you'll see this on my website i wouldn't advise you to have a lot of um sidebars or anything like that because it's it's a bit redundant now but i keep that because i'm aware that there are people who read this on, on a computer um uh but for the most part they're a bit redundant they're a bit sort of um, not, uh, 2010s rather than 2020s um uh, you only really need the menus and the, the sort of contents of the page <laughs> So that's why mine looks a little bit different from what we're gonna, I know why that's turned up now actually. Um, <clears throat> so if I take you to the behind the scenes part, so this is leading you from what you would see if you just looked me up on the computer to what I see when I log in as the page owner. So the first thing on your home page, once you're all set up is who's viewing, you can see my stats for the last few days. And you get this fabulous sidebar down here. This is your main menu. You will get used to using this very well. Um, and you can see that this is the this is my website here. Uh, there's the home page, and then there's a series of links down the left hand side. Some of them are very useful and you'll use all the time. Some of them you'll never touch. So a quick note on the fact that I'm advising everybody in the PDF to get a free website at the moment. You can upgrade to a paid one in the future if you so desire. Some of these options down the side are only available to paid for customers. So plugins, um, you can't get plugins if you're on the free tier. WooCommerce and Jetpack, again, you can't get those on the free tier, but you don't really need them to be honest. I mean, this is all for people who want to run a business, this kind of thing. Um, upgrades, obviously, unless you actually want to upgrade, you're probably not going to be going in there a lot. Um, users is another one that you will probably rarely use because it's for people who run like a project website and have a team of people doing the jobs on it. And if you're on your own, you'll look at it maybe once in a bloom. I think I've looked at this twice in 20, 12 years. So yeah, it's not very, it doesn't happen very often if it's just your own personal website. Um, but other, you, other others of these are really important. So we have pages. So pages is where all of the pages of your website are listed. These are all the ones I've published. Uh, you've got draft pages in there. There's a couple of pages that are in draft at the moment. And the reason why I was getting a weird readout on the web pages because this wasn't published. Um, scheduled, um, this is more for posts, but if you have a scheduled pa a page that you're working on, you can schedule for it to be published on such and such a date. Um, but see, those are all my blogs. They're in no particular order, really. They're just Kind of appear in the order in which you created them chronologically, sort of the oldest ones at the bottom and the newest ones at the top. <clears throat> so that's what they all look like when you, you, you've created a number of pages. The other pages you may wish to look at are appearance. So that's going to be quite important. Now my appearance is going to look a little bit different to yours because my appearance is based on a legacy account. So there are legacy features to it. Um, you'll have many fewer things here, but you will have customize and additional CSS and themes. So your theme here, this is the theme of your website. So the idea is that you pick one of these themes, like say, um, one like this, and then you model your whole website off that. So my theme is called Lovecraft. So if we type in Lovecraft, 
this is the theme that I've, I'm using now, says so current theme. Uh, and that's the, you can see again, the style that I, that I showed you a moment ago with the title um, and the big image and then the, the details there. And the last one that I'm going to introduce you to very quickly is settings. Oop, where's it gone? Here we go. So this is again quite important because this is where you get to change things like your site profile, your title, tagline. Um, but it's also where you get to do things like um, if you haven't got your website live, you can set your website to go live here. And then I'm going to just quickly go into discussion because this is quite important. So discussion settings is all about how you allow people to interact with you. Um, obviously, this is a public website it's on the web. So potentially you could get anyone looking at your website, which is great. But anyone also includes some quite strange people. So if you scroll, if I scroll down to the bottom here, you can see it says before a comment appears. So this is about people who can comment on your website. All of my comments must be manual approved, manually approved. I'm an archaeologist and there are a lot of weird pseudoscientific ideas and conspiracy theories around archaeology. So just to prevent people kind of coming on and spewing some weird conspiracy theory all over my website, I manually approve every comment. And in 12 years, that's never been a problem. There's never been more than I can handle. If for some reason you become hugely popular and you're an amazingly exciting blogger and everybody wants to read your website, you can set turn that off if you're getting like a thousand comments a day you can turn that off and you can set up things like comment moderation so you can set up if it contains certain words or phrases it goes automatically to you to be moderated before it goes live and if you're getting a lot of trolling or racist or very very unpleasant people you can set up words and phrases so that when somebody uses a certain word or a phrase, it automatically goes in the trash. Um, I mean, I'm sure you can think of a few obvious ones, but um, for the most part, I don't have that problem uh, because I'm, I'm only a small person. You'll probably find that most academics don't spew garbage all over each other's website. It doesn't happen. Um, but if you were to attract the attention of some unpleasant people, um, having your comments manually approved Help. and these boxes that I'm showing you here can really help. So that's just a, like a reminder. Um, you probably won't have any problem at all, but just to make sure nothing, no nasty surprises turn up on your public website. So I think um, I'm gonna stop sharing there because I think I've given you a good whistle stop tour of what um, a website begins to look like. So what I'm gonna suggest you do is you start working on the PDF and uh, the first few sections of it, I have, I have a, a word, word document copy here. The first few sections of it um, talk about uh, what kinds of things you're going to need and what kind of content you're going to need. And then it takes you through the initial setup, including the link that you go to to build the website. Um, in this session, I think we need to concentrate on the actual building of the nuts and bolts of the website. Um, so, for example, if you don't have things like you don't know what your tagline is going to be yet, you can just not don't worry about coming up with that right now. Put things like my tagline to go here and keep working because your website doesn't have to go live at the end of this session. You, you can work on it next week or whenever you have a free moment. And some of this, these things like um, academic mission statements and academic bios, they, they're probably going to need a little bit of thought, a little bit of work, maybe a bit of, of reviewing before you're really happy with them. So um, I would suggest you come back to those and view them as like a writing exercise maybe next week sometime. Um, one thing I have found in writing a website is it's forced me to get to grips with the kind of self referential stuff that a lot of academics don't really like to begin with things like talking about who you are why you're doing the work you're doing um, what kind of changes you want to see coming out of, of your work what kind of impact you want to have and these are all really important things for things like grant funding and writing proposals and those kind of documents so i have found it quite good practice for that so you you may also find that some of these are a little bit uncomfortable now, these, these, these writing tasks you might need to do, um, but they will, will become easier and um, it will set you up for things like grant writing. 
Um, but for now, I would concentrate on doing the actual technological stuff more than the, the writing of the content. Hello. Um, so I'm actually going to say now I'm going to stop talking now and let you get on with it. And I'm going to be here. Um, and I'd like to first of all ask if anyone has any questions about what I've said, either stick them in the chat or shout at me. <laughs> Unmute yourself first, obviously. Uh, anybody have anything? That's good. That means I made sense. Um, and the other thing I'd like to say is that if anything as you're working through the PDF doesn't make sense, then that's the time to say, hey, Hannah, I, I need some help here and we, I, I'm going to be available. And if people want to talk about anything in the PDF or ask me questions, I can show you on my screen how it looks and how I've I've created mine and, and help you that way. Um, if, if we could, ideally, we'd all be in the same room and I could wander around saying, oh, this is how you do this. Um, but unfortunately, um, uh, if we're going to do this um, for the widest possible number of people, that doesn't really work. Um, but yeah, if you get stuck as well, you're going to need, you, you can always, I can always get Linda to, to let you share your screen and then I can, I can see what's going on. You shouldn't really get stuck, but it can happen. Um, you know, learning a new, a new program can be, can be confusing at times. Hopefully there's enough in the PDF to stop that being a problem. Um, yes, Amanda, I've also got a question in the chat. Um, so we're actually going to go on to WordPress and, and start setting up our own website, right? Yeah, absolutely. I, I suggest okay. you do that. Um, if you want okay. to start with that, I've got a couple of questions in the chat. I'm going to read them off to you and people who pr prick up your ears if you're interested and I will answer the question as best I can. So the first question I have is, does WordPress back up the material? Um, the short answer to that is no, not on the free tier. So I recommend whenever you create a page, what you do is you go. So this is one of my pages. This is actually, I'm going to just share a screen now. Uh, this one. So this is one of my pages. This is the one that kept popping up at the top because it was the last one I was editing. Um, and what I, what I recommend you do is when you finish the page and it's all done, you basically copy the whole lot and paste it into a Word document. Uh, and then if the worst should happen, all you have to do is open a blank one and bang in the, the text and then reattach the images. Um, it also means that the words are available for you to use somewhere else and edit. So for example, I've definitely taken stuff off my website and then edited it into Grob crowdfunding proposals and things like that. So you will find um, other uses for the, for the text as well. Um, the other thing you can do is you can save the entire kind of the code block of your website manually. What that means is you get just a load of code and you just kind of stick, it's in a zip file and you just stick it on your computer. Um, I'm not actually sure how you kind of, if the worst were to happen to your website, I'm not how, sure how you would reinvigorate that, but at least you'd have the code saved somewhere. You could figure that out because I've never had to do it, thankfully. But I think certainly for the actual text and images, the best thing is just to keep a like a blog file or a word, website file on your computer and just keep them as documents because then the worst you're going to have is the need to just stick stuff back up. Um, and that could be a very quick job. Once you've once you've done it once, because the, the the time is the content creation. Once you've you've done the content creation, you're about ninety five percent of the way there. So I'm going to stop sharing that. Um, so uh, okay, so online identity. Is there anything specific you do not recommend? Um, I don't recommend sticking your personal email address all over your website. I don't recommend putting your po your actual postal address. So again, if I share my screen, I have a contact page on my um, on my website. Here we go. Let's go to contact. Let's scribe. Let's go to let's go over the other side. I'm going to have to remove all the people. Contact me. Right. So you can see I've got a contact me page, um, and what you can do is but you, and you see it says chalkboard so this is the like first on my postcode area basically the bit of the urban area i live in and so you know kind of which bit of the planet i'm on 
Um, and then if you wanted to contact me, you could obviously follow me on social media or you could put your name and email in these boxes and send me a message and that email will actually land in my inbox. It's tied to my own email. And I can then say, hey, this person is someone I want to contact um, and respond to you. But it means that if strange people men looking for wives, um, <laughs> weirdos and trolls try and contact you, um, you can just ignore it and you can you can block that email address from your website and you don't actually have that to worry about. Uh, other things I would recommend, so I think those are the most important, I think avoiding having comments just open for anybody to say anything is also good. Um, I think those are the main three. Uh, there are if you were, if you do attract trolls or stalkers or anything like that, there is much more you can do. And, but that's a very specific problem and a very specific issue that there's lots of advice online about that. And for most of us, we don't actually need to worry about that because honestly, we're not celebrities or something and we're not gonna get, you know, weird stalkers stalking us. Um, I did have a troll on my personal Facebook page, who was a, it was for a personal reason, not, not professional. And um, I was always very glad that I locked down my WordPress comments because otherwise they might have been spewing horrible things all over that as well. So um, it, it's, it protects you in lots of ways, having your comments tied, tied down. Um, so approve every comment is, is my best advice for that as well. Um, the other thing I would say is be very, this is quite a tricky one because I do talk about my daughter because part of why I do what I do is because I'm a mother and I, you know I'm not a full-time academic because I'm a mother and it also gives me a slightly different perspective. Um, but I have given her a um, internet safe um, kind of nickname and uh, I never show her face is the other thing. So I've shown pictures of her, like obviously fully clothed, but from the neck down with like a mask on or something, but never shown her face. So that's the other thing. So if, if you have little people in your life and you want to include them in some way, um, giving them a, a kind of a, a code name um, and avoiding showing their face is also a, a useful thing to do. Um, other than that, I think um, there's not a lot of more advice I can give you on sort of the negative aspects of protecting yourself. I think. Um, if you want to talk about the positive aspects of how to present yourself, then um, what the, the format of the website I've suggested is quite good for that. And at the end of the session, I will send out some more resources on doing the actual content creation um, uh, that, that I'm, I'm, I'm going to suggest you do after that. We've done the nuts and bolts of the website. Um, I'm going to stop sharing now and return because I've got some more questions. So, uh, okay. Um, what are the best domains for academics? There are all sorts of different ones now. Yeah, there are. Um, if you're, uh, can I just ask for clarification on that question? Are you talking literally about the domain name? So the, the website, you know, is it .com or .org.ac? Or are you talking about um, uh, the sort of ResearchGate or Academia.edu type sites that you might have separately from your, your own personal website. Um, can Christine Gunnell ask, ask, answer that? And I, I think to, to, be, to begin to answer, um, it doesn't really matter what comes after your name in your website, okay? So it doesn't matter if it's .com, .co.uk, Ah, uh, yeah, okay, okay, so wordpress.com.org. So it doesn't matter what comes after your name. Um, the most important thing is that in the domain, uh, it's, it's very clearly about you. Basically, the question you need to ask yourself is, if I go to a conference and I really impress a senior academic and they're like, wow, that person is amazing, and they wanna look me up online, what are they going to be typing into Google? Okay, and that's probably your name. So I would say most of the time, if you're doing, building an academic website, use your own name. Now, if you have a name that is incredibly common, if your name is John Smith, um, you may also need to add a middle name or a sort of a rider to help people identify you. So for example, if I were an archeologist and I, would, I was called John Smith, I might use my middle name and say, 
John Matthew Smith archaeology because then it just narrows it down when people are doing that Google that they're like oh yeah he's probably the guy and then they click on your website and they're like oh yes that's his face I recognize him so um the most the most important thing is that it's kind of very it's very easily googleable <laughs> is the answer to that question in terms of what comes after your name uh it doesn't matter uh, John Matthew Smith archaeologist.wordpress.com, absolutely fine. John Matthew Smith.org.uk, also fine. Doesn't really matter. Um, uh, the most important thing is that when somebody sticks, sticks you into Google, they find your website. Um, uh, what URL would you recommend? A lot of how to videos. Uh, yeah, um, for the most part, uh, I just let WordPress deal with the URL. Um, so unless you want to get deeply into kind of sorting your own URLs out, I would just go with anapethan.wordpress.com and not worry about it. Uh, and the main thing is that, um, I mean, people don't really need to remember URLs anymore. You stick whatever you want into Google and Google gives you the answer. Or you read something on Facebook and click a link. <laughs> So for the most part, URL is, is a bit unnecessary. Um, but as I said, the main thing is just make it memorable and easily tied to you and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, legacy personal website. Ooh, so there are, um, it depends very much how easy you find using your legacy personal website. If you open it back up and you go, this is a nightmare, I hate it, I don't ever want to see it again. Um, what I recommend is you strip out the content and start again with WordPress. Uh, yes, you probably would create a new URL unless you are already paying for a URL. If you've already like bought your own domain. So I actually have bought hannahpethan.com. Um, and I bought it through WordPress. But if you were, if I already had that with another website, you can tell WordPress, please use hannahpethan.com as my URL. Um, and there are instructions. So if you were to Google transfer my, my website to WordPress, there are loads of instructions and advice out there on how to do that. Um, but the simplest and easiest way, if you hate your existing website, is to strip out the content and build it on WordPress. The other reason you might want to do that is if you pay if you pay a hoster for it and you don't and you think WordPress would be cheaper or better. Um, and the other thing you can do is you can take some of the advice that you're going to read today and you can apply it to your personal website. So if you have a legacy website and you actually quite not like the interface and you're familiar with it, you can read through the PDF and you can apply some of that to your existing website and tweak that. And there are also resources at the bottom um, in the bibliography section of that document, which will advise you more about how to update websites if you already have one. Uh, who hosts my website? Um, I am hosted by WordPress, so it's all done through WordPress. Uh, I don't think there's a disadvantage to using a hosting site. I use WordPress because it was easy. Um, you can, if when you set up a WordPress website, um, you can say, I want it hosted through so and so. You can't do that. I, I remember when I was setting up my last one, I was, I could see that. Um, is there a disadvantage? Again, I think it depends how much you like your hosting website, your hosting site. Um, it gives you more control. People do say that, but then you, you have, it's another step, it's another stage, it's another group involved so that's that's the issue if you find um, bluehost competent reasonable not a problem i, I would continue using that um, i'm all about what's easiest um, you know this is this is for most of us a side venture it's about giving us a bit more of an identity online um, so whatever works for you is the right answer for you um, the only disadvantage i can see is that you're involving uh, you know another third party in in your website construction but again that can be advantageous if you've got you know assistance or help through them that can be useful too so it depends very much what your experience is like with your with your host um 
I don't have an email address associated with my WordPress. No, all the email associated with it goes straight to my Gmail address, which is my everything address, which receives everything from my daughter's school to um, my uh, university email is um, sent on to my to my Gmail address. So I actually find it most useful to have one email address that just sucks everything in. Um, if you are the kind of person who likes your emails divided up in boxes, so you have a work one, home one, then you might like to have an email address associated with your WordPress site. But uh, for the most part, WordPress will just send your email to whatever email address you use to set it up and it will be very happy with that. Uh, and I've never had a problem with that and it works very well. Um, so again, that's a personal thing. If you like all your email to come together, then don't have a separate email. If you like things in boxes, then do you might find that works very well for you. Part, um, you're not going to need to worry about GDPR um, with WordPress. If that is something that concerns you, or if you want to collect a lot of information, um, then you can, um, with a paid plan, have a privacy statement, or you can look up online how to write one. You can just write a privacy statement. Um, you can look up on the WordPress um, documents online what you need to know. And then there are lots and lots of sort of formats and templates and you can just write a privacy statement and you can just have that on your page and it will say, uh, you know, privacy, privacy, privacy statement. And you'll say something like, you know, this website collects, will collect um, information about your um, email address and name if you type in the contact form, etc. cetera. Um, so there are, there are, ways of dealing with that. Um, WordPress actually used to have a really handy um, cookie banner, you know, the, the EU cookie banner, uh, but that's been discontinued and that was really good, um, but they, they've discontinued that. Um, so you, you can write your own or you can, um, if you have a paid plan, you can have them automatically write it, out, write it for you. Um, now, in terms of copyright, so let's start off with the main name. Um, it's difficult to explain, but essentially, if you pay for a domain name, the domain name is yours. You can pay through WordPress or through anyone else, and the domain name is yours, and you can take it with you when you leave. If you have a hanapethan.wordpress.com domain name, that's a free one, then it's got WordPress in it. So yeah, it's not yours in the same way but you're also not paying for it so that's the that's the trade-off you make um by the way buying a domain name isn't actually very expensive i think mine cost me 15 pounds a year or something um it's it's really very cheap so you can decide uh, i mean i think the first thing to do is decide you know how much energy and effort you're going to put into a website is it just going to be like a couple of pages and then you know not much else um, if, it, if you're mainly using your website as a place for people to land and you're directing them to your social media in order to um, contact you, then you probably don't need to worry about privacy statements or anything like that. And I would also say that paying for a domain name is a bit of an unnecessary expense. If you want to blog, if you want to have a contact form, if you maybe want to engage more with people through your website, then you might want to think about whether you want to write a privacy statement. And I would certainly recommend buying a domain name for a, um, a few pounds a year. Um, it also depends, of course, on what stage of your life at. If you're a student or what have you, you might not be able to afford that. That's, that happens, it's very common. Um, and again, if you have a .wordpress.com one, then it isn't yours. Um, but you can change that anytime you like. Um, but it doesn't also it also doesn't change anything about the content. I mean, remember, ultimately all of this content is on someone else's server in a server farm somewhere. So it's always good practice to back it up. Um, and you may, you know, so yeah, take copies of all your web pages, take copies of all your pictures. Um, WordPress do not reserve the copyright. Um, they get into trouble like that if they did. So that's a thing that Facebook and Instagram do. But also, um, I'd love to see them try and enforce their copyright of your picture. I mean, it would be a hilarious court case. You know, somebody takes a picture professionally and it goes on Facebook and then Facebook tries to claim over after. That's not going to happen. Um, 
it, it's a it's an it's a nicety and certainly in the format of Facebook they can make that claim but I mean copyright is a mess it really doesn't work for the 21st century but that's a different story um let me just find I got them I got them to send me the terms and conditions I thought that might be useful uh and it's in my internet somewhere so I will go off and look that up um, but basically, yeah, if you buy a domain name, the domain name is yours. If you don't, it does still technically belong to them. Um, obviously, as their user, you have rights over it, um, but it is obviously part of their, their system. In terms of copyright, um, you're, you're pretty much you're safe. You know, that's, that's tied to you. But of course, remember, it's always on somebody else's, somebody else's computer, ultimately. Um, the other thing you need to be aware of about copyright is if you're using pictures that come from other people or other organisations, obviously acknowledgements are very important. Um, you will see if you read my website or my blog that at the bottom of pages there are often acknowledgement sections and they will have things like thank you to the people who enabled us to do this work, but also stuff about the stuff like imagery used or the pictures used or what have you. Um, so you do need to do that. Now, for the most part, you won't have a problem reusing images um, under sort of normal fair use copyright guidelines because for the most part if you're blogging or commenting or reviewing that's all covered under the whole reviewing you, you're allowed to reproduce for the purposes of criticism and review and this sort of thing um, but it, it does just pay to sort of acknowledge and reference um, as if you were writing an academic paper so nobody can get upset with you and of course if if something were to go wrong, and if somebody says, oh, you know, oh, I'm not too happy about that being up, um, you, you know, the polite thing to do is to remove it, say, oh, sorry about that, you know, it was published, I didn't think it'd be a problem, but um, for the most part, you shouldn't have any issues like that, um, but um, if you can always use your, your own images, and if you're using other people's, you know, uh, check with them first, um, most of them are very happy. To let you use them but it's worth checking and if you're using published images or excerpts from books and stuff again make sure you're using it under the sort of fair use criticism and review policy so i'm not suggesting that it's yours um let me just dig out those terms and conditions which What a quiet event. Yeah. <laughs> You're engaging everybody. Thank you, Hannah. Well, I mean, I'm having a ball, <laughs> except that trying to find uh, pictures is a bit of a problem. I'm just going to type a question for Hannah in for, um, well, Hannah, maybe I could just ask you straight out. Um, Go for it. I'm, I will find a picture of me that I don't detest at some point, but I'm wondering about reproducing uh, logos for professional societies um, like and learned societies like NCIS, for instance, if we had a bunch of logos for, in my case, the Incorporated Society, Musicians, the Chartered Institute of Linguists, NCIS, obviously, is mm -hmm. that a good or I bad idea to reproduce those on your page? Um, it depends how you reproduce them. So, for example, I can completely see, uh, I don't actually have, because I haven't written it yet, <laughs> I don't actually have a like a voluntary service or media and kind of community communications type page yet. I am mm -hmm. intending to write that. Um, and I will probably include the NCIS and the Fire UK logo on that page and say, hey, these are the organisations I'm, you know, I do stuff with. Um, and in fact, what I might do is this very busy thing. I will share your, share my screen. Um, where's it gone? That's not open at the minute. Uh, let's go to 
respecting the relevant page, respecting research is published. Right, so this page is somewhat still under construction. So apologies if it's a little bit, um, a little bit, here we go. So I'm sharing now a page that I'm, I'm editing it. It was written before, but I'm editing it. So can you see um, here, I've got a thing which says current projects and there's a picture with a link on it. So for example, I might do, this is called a cover. So you have an image with text on it and a text link to something else. One of the things I might do when I do that page is have a cover which has the NCIS logo on it and then a link to NCIS's website and say, this is who these people are that I do stuff with. Mm -hmm. So if I, if I um, link there, it opens another page and it actually goes to that page. But anyway, um, so I'm gonna stop showing it. So I might do that sort of thing and say, actually, these are organizations that I work with. Um, the other thing I might do is when I'm talking about funding I, for projects, because I will have a project section on my website when it's all finished, I will have maybe the, the logo of the, the organization that funded me in the same way you would on a presentation at a conference. You know, you make a conference mm -hmm. presentation on the cover page, it says funded by, and you have all these pictures on. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, I might do that. Um, the one thing you need to be careful to avoid is giving any kind of impression that this is the website of NCIS or 5K, mm -hmm. whoever. So it's just about being a little bit careful. Again, a little bit like you can talk about other people's stuff and you know show you their pictures and say, hey, this is a really good picture and I love it, or this is a really bad picture and I hate it. So long as you're not suggesting that you did it. Um, again, I would, I would treat logos very much the same way. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's absolutely fine to say, hey, I work with these people, I'm chair of this, I'm president of that, and this is their logo. Um, that's great. Um, so yeah, that's absolutely fine from that perspective. Um, and I don't think you need to worry about ownership because there's no evidence. The WordPress is a, it's a hosting website. It's not interested in harvesting your images. It's not Facebook or Instagram or Meta. Um, it's, it, it makes its money when you buy a plan so you know it wants you to to put it so it's, again to answer that question it looks like Web, wordpress does not reserve the right the copyright to picture or table is published although of course under our very bizarre copyright laws that date from the 19th century basically um kind of the layouts can be because they're sort of made by wordpress does that make sense so the sort of the the format is but not necessarily the content obviously it's your content um mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so it's not Facebook, it's not Instagram, it doesn't steal your images, it's it's, um, it's more like Flickr or something like that from that respect. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so, so that's it. I'm just double checking on the privacy policy for the GDPR question. I'm going to go mute now, so I'll be typing again. Any other questions while I'm here? Now I'm thinking this document looks extremely thorough. It's pretty idiot proof, which is great. I'm now going to post in here another Google Drive link. This is um, WordPress's 
privacy and GDPR statement, their own. Okay, so this is basically what's going to be behind any kind of information that is on your site. It all relates to this. So um, one of the things you could do if you wanted to just cover yourself without being too excessive is, is basically download this or find uh, a link to WordPress's privacy. They have a page as well, a website page. Um, link on the web and just say, you know, for, for WordPress's privacy and work data processing um, statements, please see. And then at least you've got something on your website that directs people who are on it to the overarching umbrella organization of how it uses data that, that comes on websites that it's involved in. So that applies, this um, document applies to both your data and it will also have application to any data of anybody who subscribes to your site or anything like that, because it's if you're on WordPress, it's all under WordPress. Obviously, if you are self-hosting, so you're hosting a WordPress site with someone else, um, this will not be the case. So then you'll have to look at your hosts um, statements and any, any kind of impact that might have, as well as WordPress. But if you're hosting through WordPress, then this is this is about ninety nine percent of of all the of, of what anybody who comes on your site can expect. Um, one of the other things is on the free tier. Um, there's no Google. Um, what's it called? Google Analytics, the Google harvesting stuff. That doesn't happen on the free tier, whereas it does happen on the paid tier. So actually, mm -hmm. if you pay, you probably need the privacy statement they provide you with because they do the Google. Google tracking and stuff. So um, that's a little sort of slightly ironic uh, feature of it. Um, but yeah, so if you're worried about GDPR or making sure that people who visit your site actually are aware of that, then um, this, this little baby is the one to check over. Anna, shall we invite people to actually ask questions rather than putting them in the chat now? Perhaps open up the discussion a little. Yeah, yeah, sure. that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, um, your copyright, your image still applies. Um, copyright is universal and it's vested in the creator of the image. And um, obviously, there will be WordPress copyright of their templates and all their website and everything else. So you are engaging in a relationship with this other body. Um, but yeah, copyright is still vested in you as the owner of the, of the image. Uh, just double check. So yeah, if you want to ask me a question, unmute yourself and shout at me. I'm just unmuting everybody. <laughs> Not letting me unmute people. I've just dropped another link in the chat there, um, talking about who owns what, exploring copyright options for blogs. Um, most of the uh, internet searches for the, for this kind of question are actually much more concerned with the idea that people will steal your stuff off your blog and then pretend it's theirs, um, which tells you where the problems in this world are coming from. Um, and it's it's not from WordPress. Um, but this is very clear. It's a WordPress.com website. And it's very clear that actually you own your content. Um, as I said, WordPress make their money by um, selling you uh, website content, website framework, um, the nuts and bolts of the website. Uh, they don't make their money from your images. Mm -hmm. Everyone should be able to unmute themselves now. So if you would like to ask a question, then please do. Hello, what would you say are the benefits of having your own website for independent scholars?
You should be able to unmute yourself now, Hannah. I can. Okay. I don't know what happened. I think I'm clicking and trying people. <laughs> Never mind. It's, a toggle, it's, a, it's one of these toggle things where if you toggle it off, we're not allowed. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh yeah. Well, one of the things is WordPress also uses toggles. Um, yeah. So if you click too many times, you can see from. <laughs> no, I was just asking. What What do you see are the benefits? Um, I mean, your instructions are lovely clear, but from what I could see, and I'm going to practice try and do mine offline. So mm -hmm. it's going to take quite a bit of time. What would you say are the benefits of having our own website? Is it worth doing? I think yes. I think. I personally think that every academic and particularly independent researchers should have their own website. Now, I say should have your own website. It doesn't have to be a multi-page, you know, you know, blog and everything else. You can just have your name, your bio, what you do, um, a link to a CV and a way of contacting you. You know, even if that's just send me a DM on Twitter, um, that's, you know, it's perfectly possible to have a one page website and just keep that. And it just but the reason I say it's useful to have is it's because as an independent, as independents, we are hugely invisible. It's, we're already invisible and dismissed by the academic establishment. Um, so if we have a bit of the Internet which says this is me, I'm an independent researcher. This is what I research go here for my CV, go here for my publications. I mean, if you have, say, an academia page where you stick your publications and you stick your CV, great. Have a website of your own and say, a couple of pictures of you. Um, this is my academic mission statement. This is what I want to do. This is my academic bio. This is where I'm coming from. For my publications of my CV, please see my academia page and contact me through Twitter. That's fine. It means that you, you've stated a claim to your little bit of the, of the world digitally. You, you, you've said, I am a researcher, I exist. I'm an independent researcher and I exist. And it means that when people read a paper you've written or whatever, or they see you at a conference or you send them an email and ask them to look in their archive, frankly, and they see a nice little professional page that says, blah, 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 I'm so and so. This is, it's, it's, something that helps to make you look more professional and and you know people say oh that's a you know that's a real person you know it's like it's a bit like when people look up an academic researcher and they get the university web page and unfortunately university kind of profiles are usually quite crappy but at least it says hey this person's a member of this university so you know have a have at least a page which says hey i'm a member of ensis and I do this kind of research and if you want to check out my publications either here's a list or go there go to this page you know it means that people have can can stick your name into google and very quickly find out that you're a real academic you're a real person you know you're not just some random bot spamming them from russia you know here's linda she does this work and she's been to these conferences and she, here's her cv and go to this you know it, it's about staking your claim to your little bit of the research world i think and because everybody does everything digitally now you don't need an academic postal address but you do need a website weirdly you know, I, and I, I do check up uh, in a rather egocentric way. I just Google my name every so often and make sure that the first ones, if the first dozen that come up are actually me and my research, I'm very pleased. There is unfortunately somebody of my name that writes crappy novels um, and, another <laughs> one that got, and another one that got done for murder. So I do want to make sure that <laughs> if people Google me, um, and I, I have just actually uh, yesterday had a, a um, taught research skills for people, for French students, so their um, English is not their first language. And I told them to Google any academics that they want to yeah. contact to find out, you know, whether they should address them as professor or doctor or whatever, because that counts. Um, and I would like them to alight on a professional site that gave them all the details that I want them to have. So do these sites come up well in, in search? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I, I will demonstrate right now. I will demonstrate, um, hold on, we'll, we'll go to here. Uh, no, we'll go to this one. 
Okay, so this is what I was just looking up. I'm just going to open a Google window. Now, bear in mind that I have a weird name. Okay, so this is why I said, if you have quite a common name or a name that you know, at least two or three other people around the world have, perhaps academics around the world, it's good to add a, an identifier, like a middle name or your research area, um, you know, um, so that people will be able to find you more easily. So if I stick, I'm not even going to bother with anything beyond my name in lower case. Okay, this is the first one that comes up about me on my website. Will eventually come up. Boom, there it is. Okay, so they are they are well indexed. That's the, one of the other advantages of, of WordPress is that it's indexed by all the search engines. So your your website will come up, and all that's why I said you, when you when you come up with your domain domain name, think. What's that person at that conference going to stick into Google when they hear when they want to learn about me? OK, now, in my case, it's just my name because I have a weird one. But if, as I said, if you're John Smith, um, John Smith, archaeology, John Smith, botany, John Smith, musicology, um, because, you know, the person Googling you is probably going to know John Smith's pretty common and they're going to have to add a little bit of a disambiguation there. Um, so. Provided you get your domain name correct it will be the first thing that comes up about you absolutely um so i'm gonna stop sharing that now um and that's why it's valuable um because it means that anybody who looks for you sees that you're a real person as well you know it's it's you know we've all had those horrible scams about oh i was dating this person online for six months and discovered they weren't people again Make, make sure that everybody knows, you know, if they come across you only in digital format, that, you know, there's there's a footprint, a digital footprint behind this. The other thing it can do is, you know, let's be honest, we all want funding and we all want jobs and we all want teaching. I know plenty of academics who put their side hustle in their website. So I have my freelance archaeology as a page on my website where I talk about the jobs I've done. Um, I've seen people who also use it because they know, yeah, the first thing an employer is going to do when they get your CV on their desk is Google you, unless they're very, very sick. Um, and if they see a nice professional website, you've already won a huge tick in the box towards getting that job. Um, for example, um, my last job I got into 2017 and I it was a museum job and I knew I was applying for it. So I wrote the latest blog on my website, which was mostly a blog then and not really a website. Um, I wrote about a museum collection that I just visited and I actually polished it rather more than I do normal <laughs> blogs because I knew I was applying for this thing. So I wanted to make it nice, you know. I read through it, no typos and all that. But it meant that when they Googled me, the first thing they saw was, oh, here's this quite coherent discussion of this museum exhibition. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's useful for that. Funders will probably look you up as well. I mean, you know, you re you might be reading, I don't know how many funding proposals, but if you're reading a funding proposal, you're probably going to Google the person on your phone or your tablet or your computer. Um, and I think the other thing is that one of the huge benefits I found was it really made me think about how I was going to explain what I was doing um, because I'm an archaeologist. So, you know, I'm not obviously curing cancer or anything. So what, what's the purpose of, of what I'm doing? Why am I bothering? Um, and it really made me think about that and about where my research falls. And that, again, is useful for anything from writing funding proposals to, to actually those introductory bits you write in in journal articles. I was writing a journal article and I was like, oh, I kind of know half of this because I was writing on a website the other day. So yeah, there's loads of there's loads of things, loads of ways in which it's valuable. Any other questions, comments or so it sounds like developing your own website is a bit of an iterative process, a bit like writing your CV in that you have to take it your time. Yeah. And think Absolutely. about it's not something you can just do in a day. It's something you need to think about and plan no. and organize. Yes, and it's, and it's also creative, isn't it? Yeah, it's creative. It's creative. I mean, uh, you can, this, this session is about, and the reason I don't like this is because, as you say, it's a creative thing. 
So you want to write your content and polish your content and go come back to it the next day and go, oh, there's an extra vert in there. Um, where, but actually bashing through, making the pages and saying, put bio here, that's a very mechanical thing. Mm. But if you are trying to do both at the same time and you've never done this before, it's quite, you know, you're flicking between the creative yeah. kind of stuff. And so build the mechanical bit first. Don't put it, don't publish it, don't set it live. And then you can come back and as you have the energy and the time, you can say, I'll write my academic, I'll write my mission statement, I'll write my tagline, you know, what 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 would I be if I was a film? You know, um, I always think of um I think it was alien, the tagline is in space no one can hear you scream. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, kind of that's kind of what you're aiming for in your tagline. It's a bit so it's a bit like that first stage of building your website is like doing the rubbish first draft of your article and then coming back yeah. and the fun bit is doing all the editing and polishing yes yeah. I can see what you mean yeah no, and so. then you look at it and go oh that's actually quite good um yeah so it's it's very much like that so you you build the mechanics in first and then you go okay in this bit I'm going to put x and in that bit I'm going to put y and x might look a bit rubbish to begin with but it will get better um and the other thing you need to do is you do need to update a website. Um, probably once a year is quite enough. You know, if you spent half a day once a year just going through, you know, do I have any extra publications? Do I have any extra teaching? Does any of this need tweaking? Does any of this not quite, is it not quite who I am anymore? Have I changed my mind exactly where I'm going with this? You know, you want it to always be the current you. It's, it's, yeah. it's the digital, it's your digital personality, if you like, is your website. Think of it um, as a kind of so, Sorry, which, which social media links do you include? I include all the ones that are relevant. Right. So, for example, if you go to my website and you click on Facebook, you'll get Hannah Pepin Archaeology, which is a page. You will not get Hannah Peffin Barrett, which is me. Yeah. Uh, and so if you interact with me on the NCIS Facebook page, you'll probably see a Barrett after my name. Yeah. Which is uh, if you click on my um, website, it just goes to Hannah Peffin Archaeology, which is my page. And the reason for that is that I basically sort of slightly split off my public persona. Yes. I have water. And it also goes to the idea of, you know, protecting yourself a bit. So it's not opened up completely to my really personal stuff it's yeah. just the page um again it goes to my linkedin uh, which is obviously a professional website anyway it goes to my instagram again which is mostly professional i wouldn't really put lots of pictures of my daughter on there um and the other thing i do is um i have a youtube channel which doesn't have a lot of things on it but i mostly use it for um, demo videos of archaeology stuff um, and GIS and stuff. So I put that on there as well. And I also have links to the academia.edu and research game, Google Scholar stuff, so people can see how my citations are going if they're really excited by that sort of thing. So if you look, if I share again, um, here we go, we'll go to subscribe on the house of like share again. So if we go to find, uh, zoom down here, okay. So you can see it says, find me online at Google Scholar, Academia, ResearchGate, or follow me on social media. So they don't have, WordPress doesn't have buttons for Google yeah. Scholar, so it has these cute little buttons for all the other things. Um, but it doesn't have buttons for them. So that's just the link in the text. So if you click, if I click on that, actually, if I just click on it without, there we go. So then you can oh, see, yeah. you can see my, and this is really because I know that, you know, some people really love the whole, oh, what's your H index? It's like, well, yes, if that floats your boat. That's where you find it. Um, so um, I, I add I add those as links in the text, and I recommend you do that as well because again, it's all the professional stuff. So basically, if it tells something about your professional life, stick it on there. If it's personal, family, that kind of stuff, don't. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, thank you. That's helpful. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so Amanda, you seem to be well on your way. With your website uh well there's plenty to do but yeah i'm um i, I just put a page up for publications um so i will play with that 
which is a shame because I've got publisher's deadline coming up, so I really shouldn't be playing with anything. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to put it on hold. But but I'm terribly excited by the idea of having a website because you keep thinking, I really ought to do this, but it just seems so complicated. So thank you so much, Hannah, for setting it out in terms that um, any of us can manage. Hannah, on WordPress, you, you mentioned you get the different templates, so just designs and things, and then you can customise them. How difficult is that? I mean, do you just recommend going with the template they give you? Oh, why are you? She's, she's muted. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't muted everybody, everybody's. Yeah, I, I don't know what's happened there, but um, the, the default is that everybody's muted and they can't unmute themselves. I've, I've said. Mm. Uh, hold on, I can talk now, yay. What's <laughs> going on? It's really bad. Um, yeah, so um, the templates. Okay. Yeah, so you mentioned one, you chose some Lovecraft. Yes. Yeah, the one, the one absolute um, and complete health warning I need to give you about templates is if you set, if you decide to change your template, okay, you're going through and you're like, I'm kind of bored with this or this is old. See, uh, before I went to Lovecraft, I only went to Lovecraft about three days ago. Um, because I was on 2011, which was they have a they do a, a yearly template, so every year there's a template. But 2011 has been deprecated, so it means half the stuff doesn't work anymore. So I'm thinking I need a new template, really. Um, and then I went to Lovecraft. I was like, oh no, now I need to go through and make sure all my pages look right in this format. Because what tends to happen is you have a template, and then you start, you know, playing around with it a bit. Um, and you add a picture here and a picture there and it all looks great on the template and you check it on the tablet and you check it on the phone and it all looks great but if you then change the template sometimes the layout doesn't quite look right maybe you need to move the picture maybe you need to divide up to text you know it, it maybe the columns don't align properly depends on the template so if you change a template you can't go back there's no undo for changing a template so by all means have a good look at all the templates but if you've got a lot of pages Give yourself you know a couple of hours after if you want to change to really look through and make sure everything looks right and you don't need to tweak anything it won't be big it won't be big issues but they might just be the odd thing that you need to think about tweaking a bit so that's the, the health warning apart from that actually um templates are really great um what templates do is they give you a place to start so there are two different kinds of templates um templates i've just been talking about are what wordpress calls themes so that's the theme of your page like hmm. mine is themed as love okay so i'm going to share again so you can get a really good idea of what this this is this looks like okay so if we go to appearance it's already open helpfully we go to themes so it's on lovecraft so these are the themes so you can click on them i'm going to move these chaps over there so let's say i fancy appleton i can click on it and it will give me an example and it will also give me an overview and um, it will, there's a video, um, how you use the editor, you know, it'll talk about what you can do with it. It'll sell it to you basically. So that's the thing. But what you then get is the option to um, change the layout of the individual pages. So for example, if we go to pages, and if we go to add new page over here, so we're going to pretend I want to add a new page. Um, now, let's suppose I want to add a page about my, I don't know, media and NCIS work and stuff like this. So, um, now I did see a very good page. Here we go. So there was an about page, which I quite like. So this is a page layout. So you have the theme of the whole website and then you have the page layout. So this is the page layout I was thinking of using for my media and communication stuff. Now, they bill it as an about page, but you just delete that. Um, and what I liked about it was I thought I could put sort of some of my ideas on the left and then on the right, I can have some of the public um, media and presentation work I've done on the right. So I've, I've looked at a layout and it's given me an idea. And that's why I say, um, when you're looking at a new page, have a quick look at the layout to see if anything gives you a really good idea. 
um, I'll probably delete that um, or shift it about in some way. Um, so for example, I could start with this and then I could start moving it around because once you select a page, so I'm just going to go back, right, so once you select a page, so let's say I'm going to select this page, let's call it, why is it being so slight? There we go, I want that one. So I'm going to call this um, media and public archaeology. There we go. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've changed the name already, and then I can add text here. So I change that um, to something else. We'll leave that there. And, um, and I'd probably have, what I'd probably do is use this block. Okay, so this is a group block. So it's, the whole thing is inside this lovely group thing. And what I'd probably do is I'd probably do something like this. Um, Oops. Oh, undo. Thank you. Um, NCIS. Here we go. And then in this bit, I would write about what I, why I'm a member of NCIS, what I do with NCIS. And on the right, I'll have this presentation and, and yeah. the previous what I did. Um, and then I'll probably now I might do this as a whole new page. Who knows? Have an NCIS page and another page. What I'll probably do is have another page, which will be Essex Egyptology Group, where I'll talk about what I do there. Yeah. And then I will stack them as children okay, under the media and archaeology page. So um, if we look at the page, you see at the bottom page actually it says parent page. Now I'm going to pretend that blog is the right one because actually um, I don't have a media and public archaeology page. But once you've published your kind of top top level page, you can add children to it. So I could have a media and public archaeology, and I could talk about why I think that's important, kind of a few of the things I've done, and I could have an NCIS page and Essex Egyptology page, all as children of that. What would happen? <coughs> Is when I uh, um, if, is when I go to um, my site. You can see how under research. Oops, that's one more. If I go to um, if I go to blog, you can see how it's got a whole list of yeah. stub things under it so these are children so this is a parent and these are the child child pages that are under and they have children pages of their own so you can navigate through and you can create that so i can have a media and public archaeology page and i can talk about media presentations on one and ncis on another and presentations to local groups on another and get the idea um so that's why i mean you the, the template theme you start with, the Lovecraft theme, and then you have page layouts that you could choose, and you can modify both of them. So you modify the themes with the customizer, or for you, it will also be the editor. I don't have access to that, but for, I have the customizer. So I can customize things like colors and backgrounds, like so change. Oh, it. so that's what you could do. Palettes. Yeah. Um, I can I can change the header image. Oh look, I can have a funky cityscape instead of me looking into the sun above the headships at Temple. Um, you can customize the menus. Um, it's not a lot of that to, to do, but most of that's automatic. But you can customize it. Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah, could you continue here, but a little more slowly? Sorry. I'm not okay. So, so when you start, when you select a theme. Um, does it come with the pictures that are on the theme and what do you do to change it to your own? I mean, I see that you're doing that here, but you're going way too fast. It does. It absolutely um, comes with the pictures on the theme and it's very straightforward. Um, what happens is that as soon as you, I've gone back to this first page, um, as soon as you go to the, um, the add new page, so the, the theme tells you what the site looks like with all its menus and stuff right but you don't get the pictures that come with it um it will change those but um so when you get add page if i just add it's a little slow if i just add a blank page that's what you get 
okay as in, so it's not got like the lovecraft picture at the top you can add that later if i go okay. back, right could, could go you go back. back to just select a theme and show us what is yeah. in it when you select it okay so that the theme the theme of the whole site uh where they gone um under appearance here we go so the theme of the whole site so i'm on lovecraft this is me um, okay and that's what they sort of show you as a kind of exemplar but you don't get any of that what you do what you get is the ability to customize it which i've just clicked on there all right over there now it shows you my content because i've already got that sorry uh, so it's i've already got can you hear me? Yes. Can I'm... I ask a question? Yeah. Um, yeah. How does the theme relate to the the front sheet, front page? Mm -hmm. So the theme tells you what it will look like. So the theme generally gives you the outline of the whole website. So it gives you where your title will be. This is part of the theme. Okay, where your tagline will be, this is also part of the theme, mm -hmm. where your menu will be, okay, ignore those, they've, they've turned up in a really odd place. Um, and if you have a picture here, so some themes will have a little picture off to the side over here, other themes won't have a picture at all. The other thing the theme controls is whether you can have a sidebar like this one. And if you have a, a, some themes, although it's very much passe now, they don't, most don't really do it, is some themes have a, a footer. So you can go to the very bottom of the page and you can have something down here. Um, now, uh, that, that doesn't happen very often. So the, the theme dictates the alignment of the information that doesn't change between pages. So the title, the menus, the sidebars. The, Layout tells you what the page looks like. So the layout is this part. Okay, so there's a kind of a box on my screen. Um, it's, it starts here um, and it goes down here and down here and it goes all the way down to there. Okay, that's where it stops. And that is the page itself. So the, you have to imagine Every one of my pages has title, menu, sidebar, a picture, sometimes different. And if I had a footer, it would also have a footer down here. But the layout of this part can be different. And that's the difference between the theme and the layout. So the theme tells you what all the bits that don't change between the pages are gonna look like. And the page layout tells you how that how the template for that particular page is is suggested to be laid out, and then you can customize it further from there. So at the moment, I'm in the theme customizer, so I can customize all of these bits like the title, the tag, um, the menus, the fonts and colors, the widgets. Um, widgets are. This is a widget. This is a Google Translate widget that will translate my page. Uh, uh, and content options. So um, this is mostly for posts, but um, sometimes uh, that can be useful as well. Um, <coughs> sorry. Yeah, I think we're going to have to wrap up now. Um, okay. We're on. We actually overrun slightly. Okay. Um, can I just? Can I just? show the the page layout again because i think that's quite important so if i go back to add new okay so the so page is, is that bit inside that rectangle and the page um has a number of layouts so you can have the blank page or you can have one of these and you can see how that's the one i'm thinking of using for my ncis um, that's the one i'm recommending you use for your home page and this is the part inside that rectangle so the title and the menus would look the same on every page and then the internal part of the page looks different 
And this you can further customize and you do that by adding and removing blocks in the same way that you'll see in the section on creating your homepage or creating a publication. You just add and remove blocks. And in fact, as part of the homepage, I get you to delete a block um, because we're not using it. Uh, and that's quite important because it gets, you know, you, you can take these templates, you can delete one bit, add another bit, you know, so it becomes really yours. Okay, I think Linda wants me to stop. No, I think, you know, the schedule's finished. Okay. Uh, but can I ask one more question? Please? One more question um, the to wrap up, oh, please. Yes, the articles that you have on the pages do you create the uh, articles or do you import them or do you no they're all they're all created by me so wordpress does allow you to import or it's called like repressing and it does tell it where it comes from so like there's no plagiarism or anything it says like we re import it imported from x y or z so if you find a wordpress article that really interests you and is about the same thing that you're blog is about you can kind of say oh hey have a look at this one that I found um, but for the most part you need to create original content because it's about you so um, this is this is why there's a mechanical bit which is the generating of the web page and the, and the site and then there's a creative bit which is what goes into these pages and that all has to come out of you because it's got to be about you and your work and um, I mean, there are people who you could pay to come up with your academic mission and this kind of thing. But for the most part, it's 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 better practice to do it yourself because it it, it teaches you how to think about what you're doing, you know. Um, and as I said, that's that's very good when you have to explain in a in a publication or a funding application. You know, this is why I want to do this. It's helpful to have that practice. So yeah, um, I would recommend making all your own content. Although there are people who will help you with that if you want. Okay, thank you, Hannah. This has been a wonderful session. Um, I've now got to go away and spend a day or two. Just, I mean, I think this is this is going to be playing around with and just being creative and finding what works, what what you think captures yourself. If you I mean. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that's part of the fun of it. It's not just about writing the word. It's it's almost design. It is designing. It's creative. It's, yeah. 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 No, that's brilliant. But so so very much, so Hannah. Thank you. Thank you for everyone for turning up. On a, well, it's a Saturday night in the UK. Autumn has arrived here. Um, yeah. So we hope to see you at a future event very soon. Our next event will be on the fifth of November, and we will be sending out details fairly soon. Okay. But thank I think you. Everybody. Somebody has got their hand up. Um, I don't know if they if there's a very quick question. Oh, yes. I just wanted to thank you. Uh, my name's Coco. Thank you. This has all been really great. Um, if uh, if one has multiple um, or subjects varies, uh, different um, interests, do you suggest having a separate WordPress link or how would you manage that? Um, Oh, that's very much me. So I'm both an archaeologist working in, in a technical field of GIS satellite imaging, and also I specialise in Egyptology as well. Um, I would actually, I would actually try to come up with a way of combining it. And you can always say, I'm, I'm an, I'm a researcher who studies uh, music and literature, for example. And then you could even have two pages. You could have a page all about, you know, literature. And a page all about music. Um, if it, uh, if you wanted to separate it out, if, if they were very different fields, if you were working in a very interdisciplinary blah, interdisciplinary way, so I bring the technical archaeological stuff into my Egypt stuff, then I think what you need to do is pitch yourself as working between the two. For example, in the example I gave, you know, um, I'm an academic who studies, say. Uh, music in literature from the perspective of a musician and a literary critic could be a way somebody might might combine the two if they were doing interdisciplinary research. So if you've got very different things, I would say you do two different things. Perhaps one is like a side hustle or an employment thing. Um, and if you do, you know, if, you, if you're working in an interdisciplinary field, so you're bringing two fields together effectively, 
I think it's really good to actually say that. And again, that's a really powerful part of who you are and what you're doing. Um, the other thing is if you are working in two very separate things, one of the most powerful things you could do on your homepage is talk about how those two things kind of influence you or work together for you. So um, instead of instead of looking like, oh, there's two different things you do, you say, well, this is really important to me because, you know, um, the musicality of language is important for my literary studies or something like that, you know, find a way to, to bring them together and make that strength because it is. Um, and thinking about that can be one of the things that can help you, not just with a website, but also with your, your research journey. Does that help? Mm -hmm. So yeah, I would put them on the same website and I would either find a way to combine or talk about them together or, or maybe even have two separate pages where you talk about. Them. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.